things and the general consensus is that Roy Gregg was badly beaten, had whiskey thrown, poured down his throat and was then thrown into a burning vehicle. So it's not just we, this case kind of diversifies into that. Uh, Anne herself was a victim of domestic abuse. Holly has been a victim of sexual abuse and now their uncle has been murdered. So it's obviously a, a very big case and there's so many facets to this story and hopefully people is, uh, we're breaking it down in a simple enough fashion that everyone can understand uh, the particular parts of this case. But let's t now talk for a moment your arrest, Robert, because the authorities, in my opinion, have scored a bit of an own goal by arresting you. After all, you're only seeking justice for a sex abuse victim. If they have nothing to hide, they sure are jumpy and they're acting as if they are seriously scared by this story. You're right on bail at the moment. Uh, Without uh, incriminating yourself, let's just discuss your arrest, when it happened, what you've been charged with, and how your arrest drew more attention to this case than you ever could have hoped for by just passing out some flyers or something in Aberdeen. Well, that's, that's correct. Now, of course, I think an important uh, facet of this is that uh, I, I was intending, and still intend, to stand as a parliamentary candidate in Aberdeen South to highlight the Holly Gregg case, just a one-issue candidate. Now, uh, I was I arranged a meeting publicly at uh, 10.30 in the morning on the 12th of February in Aberdeen, a city I'd never previously been to, and there were several journalists, television company, and quite a lot of other people who were interested in the case had promised to come along, and I was really there to hand out leaflets about the case and to introduce myself to the people of Aberdeen as I needed support for the forthcoming election. Uh, before I had the chance to do that, I was arrested by two CID officers uh, and taken to uh, Queen Street uh, Police Station, the main police station, Aberdeen. Uh, I was later in the day, I was interviewed and later in the day charged and held in solitary confinement over the weekend until the Monday when I was released on bail although the Crown didn't even want me to be released, despite the fact, I think it's fair to say, that I've never been a danger to a, a soul all my life and never intend to be. But obviously, the, the, uh, there's only one reason for that, was to shut me up. And again, it, it's very much part of the, the problem that exists in Scotland with a really brutal regime that has no respect for human rights. Uh, just getting back to a few MSN stuff that's come in. Uh, remember, you can add us studio at MS uh, studio at Manchester Radio Online dot com. That's studio at Manchester Radio Online dot com. Foxy says you have so much support over this. We should not stop until justice is done for Holly and, and every other innocent person. Uh, John says, keep up the good work. The numbers are growing. Robert, what can we do to help, especially with your trial coming up? And uh, Greg says. Uh, he is a hero and a brave man for standing his ground. Uh, I listened to Robert on the Paul Drockton show. He was accompanied by a lady from Aberdeen named Mary. Could you please ask Robert to pass on this email address and ask her to get in touch so we can further the momentum. And that's aberdeentruthcon at hotmail.co.uk. Many thanks and thank you for having Robert on your show. So there's definitely a lot of support out there and stuff. And uh, you were on that uh, Paul Drockton show. Just tell us a bit about that if you can. Yes, indeed. Well, I, I was really in the same sort of situation that uh, I am at the moment in that I'm very restricted to what I can say, unfortunately. And I, I hope people understand that when they ask questions further on. There are a lot of things that I would love to be able to tell you, as I've mentioned, but I, I really have to be very careful careful about what I say. But um, when people ask about can they help, uh, I think the best way to help is, um, in the short term, is to perhaps email and contact all the people concerned. And I'm particularly, if you could be helpful by contacting the Lord Advocate, uh, Elise Angelini, who has a major part in this story, and certainly a major part in the cover-up, uh, the Justice Minister, Mr Kenny McCaskill, and the First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmon. Any of those three people uh, should and ought to be answering your questions about this. And I think one thing is very important that uh, I perhaps uh, should have expanded on a little bit when I was talking about the way Scotland is run, and that one of the biggest problems is there's no free press there. The press is almost, uh, almost entirely controlled by one law firm called Levy and McRae, who not only act for Mrs Angelini and Mr McCaskill, who used to work at the firm, but also, uh, I understand, uh, are the lawyers for most of the press in uh, major press uh, outlets in Scotland. So this, even whatever the, the merits or demerits of the story, we, we hope you look at it as merits, uh, this would be a very unsatisfactory state of affairs in any democracy or any, any country that's supposed to be a democracy. Indeed, and that's why... Uh we find ourselves here. I'm able to talk about it because I'm an independent journalist on an independent online-only radio station and we don't answer to Ofcom. 
Uh, and as you say, we'll talk about the BBC a bit later on because obviously the BBC were going to uh, cover that story, but we'll get the full details of that later on. I just get back to this interview I did with Anne now because I asked Anne Gregg about her thoughts concerning your arrest, Robert. You've been fighting this by yourself and my colleagues for quite a while. Yeah. Now there's more encouragement, more support coming. Yes. How did you feel when Robert Green was arrested? Oh, absolutely incensed. You know, that Robert has just been an absolute diamond, you know, to help Holly in in this way. And, uh, you know, he's you know put his own neck in the, the line for this, you know. And, you know, we went up there and he went up there as a political candidate, you know. Uh, to get this story out, to let the people of Aberdeen know that what was going on in their city, and he never even, you know, got to the the spot, you know, where he was supposed to, have, you know, cause this uh, breach of the peace, and you know the the comical thing or the you know stupid thing is that he was charged for breach of the peace for eight months prior, you know, to. Yeah, the breach of the peace. Now, you know, how long does it take the police to recognise there's a breach of the peace going on? You know, eight months. You know, it's a, it's a bit it's a bit crazy, isn't it? And uh, we, we mentioned the Facebook group uh, today. It was taken down. The main one it had over ten thousand members. Um, how do how do you feel about that? Oh, I'm very angry. You know, the Scottish Justice Department have gone to California. You know, to close this down. What are they so afraid of? You know? And they give no no warning or no, no reason or No. No, none at all. None at all. Just it's all threats. That's all that you get. D notices and threats. Just talk for a moment about the, the wider cover up because the allegations are there, we've already determined that no one's even been questioned about this. But there's a wider kind of clump on the story itself and very few people are willing to Take it up. Just talk for a moment, if you can, about the, how you see the cover-up and how you see people being protected. Well, for a start, the uh, you know the, the main uh, bodies involved in this is Levy and McCrae. You know, we can't get anything out in the, the media, you know, because Levy and McCrae uh, are gagging. You know, all the the newspapers. You know, they're telling the uh, the editors. You know, who in turn are being told by, you know, the Justice Department, you know, and also Levy McCray are threatening with, you know, to close them, them down. Uh, so, that, you know, there's no freedom of speech or, or anything like that. Uh, Alicia Angelini is, you know, Grampian Police, you know, I'm sure there, there must be a lot of, you know, officers at Grampian Police that, you know, would like to see this story out as well. You know, but they are being told by the Justice Department, you know, not to let this story out, you know. And uh, way back in 2000, there was a, a policeman said to me, uh, you know, he says, we, you know, we are governed by the Justice Department. You know, there's nothing we can do about it, you know. That was part three of my interview with Anne Gregg. You're listening to The Tony Legend Show here, live on Manchester Radio Online. My studio guest is Robert Green, and we are covering the story of Holly Gregg. And I have a short interview with Holly herself coming up before the end of the show, plus lots more with Anne Gregg, who, of course, is Holly's mum. And if you want to talk to Robert Green or myself here in the studio, we are live, and we really want to hear from you. Please add us on MSN, studio at manchesterradioonline.com. Robert, your, the news of your arrest kind of went round the world. Um, how, how did you feel when you got the kind of, I suppose you could say, a bit of an international reaction on everything? Well, I absolutely no contact with the outside world whatsoever. I hadn't got a clue what was going on. I didn't know any, whether anyone was taking any notice or what. So when I got out, I was absolutely staggered when a group of people approached me when I came out of the jail and said, there he is, and charged towards me. And uh, I, was, uh, I was completely bowled over by the, uh, the wonderful reaction that uh, people had, uh, had come up with after I'd been arrested. It was, it was terrific. Um, I think one thing I, I would perhaps like to add before I perhaps forget to mention it is, and this is a very serious uh, constitutional issue, uh, I regard my arrest as a political arrest which flies in the face of democracy. This is an attack on democracy. I, was, I had very serious criticisms of the government, the Scottish government and their conduct, and I was prepared to stand to bring this to the notice of the public in a country that does not have a free press. So I've been prevented from, effectively prevented, we're not, we're not really prevented yet, but my campaign has already been damaged uh, from standing in a British general election by the government that's controlled by a party 
party, the Scottish National Party, for which I and none of my countrymen in England, Wales or Northern Ireland could possibly have voted for. So I think this is a, a very interesting constitutional issue and needs to be addressed.